of our mother, thrice, admir thrice admirable. But some of the important considerations for us as we consider ourselves as a new movement, one of the new movements of the church, is to um, look at who are we today in this charism, reminding ourselves of his teaching, which we must be faithful to, because it's a charism from God, as declared by the church. But we also have to say, who are we in 2014? 100 years later with that same charism. And so some important considerations for us is that no charism is frozen in time. What do I mean by that? Is no one can say, well, we have to go back and live 100 years ago because life's different. A charism is given to move forward with us, to accompany us, just as the gospel was proclaimed in, uh, in Palestine by Jesus. I just returned from two weeks ago from there. And you can feel, I mean, once you have a guy that really understands the beauty of, of the gospel, the beauty of the scriptures, you, it comes alive. But you also realize as you leave on that plane heading back home that it comes with you. It doesn't stay there. This past summer, we had a, uh, a conference of bishops who belonged to the Focolari, and one of the bishops who's a theologian, uh, an incredible mind, he's hard to talk to because his mind's up here and you're kind of down here like, like a little baby with a bowl, just, just fill my bowl, you know. But he said that many of us, um, whether it's just the normal everyday Christian or people with charisms, we live life in a jet lag. We can live as a jet lag. He said, we're here, but if we live a hundred years ago in our minds, our hearts and back here, we're a hundred years behind. There are other Christians who are a hundred years ahead, you know, who want everything to change and want all these, you know, innovations in the church and they're not where we are. And so when we consider a charism, which is not frozen in time, but we bring it to who, to where we are. So we are in the here and now because God is the eternal now. God is not yesterday, not tomorrow. He's here and now among us. And so our charisms, the gift of the Holy Spirit, because it is a gift of the Holy Spirit from the Holy Spirit, is here and now. And that brings us to us to bring the richness of the teaching, the doctrine, the spirituality of Father Kentenek now, now, um, we call it sometimes nostalgia, that we want to go back to the way it was. And all of us want to do that. You know, I was talking to somebody yesterday and we were remembering how we didn't have air conditioning. And we we're talking about the big box fans that we had in our homes or in our home in Houston was the big attic fan, you know, that it sucked up all the air and you'd open the windows and the whole house was just flowing with breeze in, in those hot, humid summers. Thank God we don't go back to that, but, but there's a nostalgia. You know, you can almost hear those fans rolling or the box fans, and uh, all these things are, are, are part of our history, but they're back there. And we do more harm to the life of the church if we're back there. And so we have to be Christians, um, charism, carriers today in the present here and now. The second point, which I've already alluded to, is the fact that charisms are not given to be self-serving for us, for our own personal holiness. Yes, first and foremost, they are called, we are called to follow this way to be holy, as we are through our baptism. And I believe Father Kentenich very much linked this call, this covenant, with the covenant that's ours in baptism. Any charism is a covenant to live out the baptismal call which we received. And that's why we're so integrated into the life of the church. But it's not self-serving because even at baptism, we are called to be Christ, to go, to go, to go, as our Holy Father is so famous for saying to us today. It, selves, it serves for personal holiness so that we can go to others. The Holy Father just last week met with the um, assembly council that met with the Focolari to elect the new president and co-president and others. 
and he met with them last week. And one of the things, of course, he always gives three points. I'm not going to give you the three points. But one of the things that he said that I thought was very interesting about this going out to others and not just serving ourselves, he said that any spirituality, any Christian, any community, any parish, uh, any institution that is inward looking and excludes others and just saying it from a parish point of view, so we can all identify. And I know that Miss Olga is here, who was my secretary, did all the bookings at St. Helen's Church, and she'll know very well. The Guadalupanas have the room on that day, so the Knights of Columbus can't come in. Well, could you share it? No, we can't share, because we have it, you can't have it. So we begin to exclude. And how many times we've felt people coming into our parishes, they don't feel welcome. They're excluded in some ways. So the Pope said any spirituality, any community that tends in whatever degree to exclude others is deceptive. It's pretty strong words. And he said becomes narcissistic. Stronger words. Very narcissistic. Which means it's all about me. And again, as new movements, we all go through this. I mean, I will say for the focolari, I was narcissistic as a priest, you know, because if you didn't become focolari, it's like, what's wrong with you? Don't you understand? You know, and how many times was I shot down, you know? Because that's not what it's about, to push something on somebody. It's to live. It's to be who we are inwardly, but going out as that renewed person, as that cares, uh, carrier of that charism. And when that inward looking remains self-serving and becomes deceptive to ourselves and narcissistic, it will die. It will not only struggle and become stagnant, but it will die. The church would die if it only serves itself. Because God didn't send Jesus to serve himself, to create a little band of people to serve themselves. Jesus at the end, as he was leaving to return to the Father, said, now go. Make disciples of all nations. <laughs> Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so as we look back to a hundred years, we do so with that gratitude. And a bit of a nostalgia, I think, would be inhuman to say we're not a bit nostalgic of the past. But it's not to remain there, but it's to go forward, to go forward. And so a time of thanksgiving, a time of remembering 100 years is a time of giving thanks and of remembering. And to that point, kind of moving into a little bit of the new evangelization, I found something uh, that I wanted to bring to our attention. 